You're listening to She's the Business Podcast. If you've been feeling like you needed to have everything figured out and mapped out in front of you before you embark on a new business or a new venture, then today's episode is probably exactly what you needed to hear. How somebody can continually evolve and step into their purpose and be in exactly the right place without having needed to know what it was, to know what's coming next the entire time is just so inspiring. And you're going to love to hear the inspirational story today of how somebody could take their corporate life and corporate business, start a side hustle, turn that into another really successful business and now be helping others to create their own business. She's doing it all. She is a super mom, a superstar, um, but she's also making it so, so easy. Ah, how good is that? Right. Let's dive into today's episode. Um, Stay tuned. It's coming right up. Hi, I'm your host, Jessica Osborne, and in my 23 years of business and marketing, I've built many brands to become multi-billion dollar companies. And just in the last 10 years, I've built two online businesses of my own from my dining room table with two little babies running around at my feet. I've made it my mission to inspire you to get out of your own way and become the successful business owner who's living the lifestyle you really desire without all the hustle. This is She's the Business podcast made by women for women. This is your weekly dose of motivation and inspiration. My special guest today is Elizabeth King, who is an internationally certified fertility expert and founder and CEO of the Fertility Coach Academy. She helps people of all backgrounds conceive a healthy baby and carry to term. Now, Elizabeth is also the host of the podcast called Creation Innovation and has contributed to the books Naturally Conceived and the Creative Life Book. She has been an entrepreneur for over 25 years and today in this episode she takes us behind the scenes to share with us her journey of how she started, where she started out as a life coach and how that's evolved into a fertility coach and now she actually coaches other people on how to become a fertility coach. So there's been so many evolutions in her life, in her business and she really shares with us so much about how that has happened. So I know you're going to love listening to Elizabeth's story and really how you can sort of take some of this and use that yourself in your own business. Um, You know, what decisions you're holding back from, what is it that you're feeling called to do that maybe you're not doing because you're not sure of how that's actually going to work out. Well, I think you're going to just gain so much from hearing Elizabeth's story today, some of the amazing insights and lessons that she shares that have helped her to become so successful, both as an entrepreneur and she also runs another business um, in the corporate marketing space. So she is absolutely an amazing, super talented person. And I know you're going to love hearing from her as much as I did. Without further ado, let me play this interview for you. Okay. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to She's a Business Podcast. I have with me here today, Elizabeth King, who is the founder, CEO of the Fertility Coach Academy. Uh, Welcome, Elizabeth. So good to have you here today. Thanks for having me. (laughs) Awesome. Now, we've got quite a lot. I want to really dive into um, your background. You know, 25 years, did you say a moment ago, you've been an entrepreneur or was it 23? (laughs) It was like 25, yes. 25, yes. Amazing. It's like, that is incredible. I think, you know, to be somebody who's owned businesses, you've obviously got so much um, to share in your story. And before we kind of get into a lot of that, what you've brought into business and how you've got to where you are today, um, I'd love to just hear a little bit in your own words, you know, what do you do now? Who do you help? How do you serve them? 
Yes, that's a great question. I serve men and women that are on their fertility journey, trying to conceive and really helping them to get to their path of parenthood. I also have the Fertility Coach Academy where we certify other fertility coaches. So you don't have to necessarily have gone through your own fertility journey, perhaps pregnancy and women's wellness and all things around that are something that drives you and you're interested in. We also certify people in that as well. So that is what we do now. I also have a separate business where I do corporate marketing and that's a whole nother side of things. So I have, well, I say two businesses, but really within the coaching, there's multiple facets as uh, so we're constantly marketing different things, but it definitely keeps me busy. That's for sure. My heart and my most of my time is on the coaching side uh, yeah. because I realize that that's, you know, my mission in life, really, the the marketing side was, is still a nice thing for me, but really what mm -hmm. wakes me up every morning and what really fulfills my heart and my day is coaching. And I started life coaching in 2008. And I joke that back then, people would say, you know, you're from California, you eat sushi and you're a life coach. Like life coaches weren't really a thing in 2008. <laughs> and um, I shifted all of that to specialize in fertility in 2017, early 2016, based on my own journey and my history with women's wellness and things of that nature prior to that. So that's wow. a little bit about me at the moment. <laughs> yeah, there's so much in there. So yes. 2017, you really started to move into the fertility based on you mentioned your own story. So that's like must have gone really quickly for you the last six years um, of becoming a fertility coach. And now you actually coach other people on how to be, a, you know, you certify them how to be a fertility coach. So do you want to dive into a little bit of that? You know, what made you decide that that was the area that you wanted to be in um, and how has that sort of come about? Great question. So as a life coach, I always believed that it was important for me to meet my clients where they were at. And having had a history myself of going to therapy and things, that's actually how I got into being a certified life coach is I had gone to marriage counseling with my first husband. And one day we walked out of there and he said, this is feeling like divorce therapy rather than marriage therapy. Like they're, they're not really giving us the tools to move forward, to stay together. And that really clicked for me wow. because I realized that I had seen so many people go to therapy for years, talking about the same things and never really making progress and whatever it was that they were doing. I'm like, there's gotta be a better way than this really, you know, yeah. he's right. And so I figured out that there was this new kind of avenue called life coaching. And I met this woman who was doing that. And it really opened my mind up to coaching focuses on from here forward, whereas therapy generally focuses on the past and why are you the way that you are? And, and that's why a lot of people kind of get stuck in this role. I was at a networking thing recently and a therapist said, I have a lot of clients that I've had for 10 years and I cringe. I'm like, oh, who, who wants that? You know, our goal <laughs> is to get people well and to get them on their way. And so I spent a lot of my time coaching from 2008 to 2017, people that have gone through things that I had gone through. And yeah. um, again, really felt that it was important for people to sit across from you. And again, this is pre COVID to say, they know what I'm going through. They really understand yeah. if that the path that I'm walking versus, you know, talking to somebody that I really can't you know, I don't understand what that's like. I, I don't really want to pretend like I can now fast forward to 2017 and i started my own fertility journey i was very fortunate that i was over 40 at that point and um ha had gone through freezing my eggs and ivf on my own prior to meeting my husband but even prior to that many years before it's now been i think 27 years ago my my sister that's next to me um was diagnosed with a cervical cancer mm -hmm. and that was really my intro into all things women's wellness and fertility and the importance of all the things so yeah. there had been several touch points throughout my life that were kind of leading me down this path 
of course I didn't recognize it until it slapped me in the face one time, you know, that one time was a significant time for me, which was after my first miscarriage, when I was having my DNC and the couple next to us was doing their first retrieval. And I found myself sincerely excited for them in my heart about this, you know, new path they were going to, but also so devastated for us and this fact that our story was changing and something was being ripped out from me that I was so hopeful for. Mm. And I recognize that nobody ever thinks this is going to be their path. No one ever thinks they're not going to be able to get pregnant. We all think, you know, we better watch out. You're going to get pregnant, you know, (laughs) and all those sorts of stories, not Mm -hmm. the other side of things. Mm -hmm. So I really made it my mission to help people I say men and women because men equally have the same issues. They're just not as open as talking about it. And, you know, putting all of my heart and soul in serving these these people that are going through the journey because it isn't something that we are prepared for in any sort of manner. And the level of stress that is actually takes place on it does affect the journey. And it has been scientifically scientifically proven by a major university in America that it is the same stress level as a cancer patient for somebody that's going through fertility. So the need for fertility coaches is huge. Fertility or infertility, if some people want to say, is increasing worldwide, which is really scary to say. But mm-hmm. unfortunately, we something that we need to face and being a mom of three myself, it's something that I'm very well aware of, of the environment and why numbers have changed so dramatically over the past 50 years uh, with fertility. So that's kind of how I got into this particular niche of coaching at this point. Wow. Yeah, that's amazing. I love listening to you. Such an amazing story. And, you know, you can really see how everything in your life kind of led you to this point. And so you coach people on their fertility um, yourself and then when did you decide you would help other people become certified as fertility coaches and what does that actually look like? (laughs) Yeah that's also a great question so as I started to show up first it was very you know organic where just my friend would say I have a friend who's had a loss can you please talk to her or I know somebody who's going to go through IVF or who's really struggling to get pregnant. I ended up having my three children naturally over 40. And so that became its own kind of niche of, I really believe anybody can have a child over 40, but can we have three healthy children over 40? And I I do believe that that's possible. And why that's possible is because we put all of the kind of framework together in order to make that happen. Now, of course, there's situations where people might have structural issues or genetic issues and things like that. So we definitely want to make sure that, you know, notwithstanding those things, everything in your body is teed up for success. But I I started noticing a lot of people messaging me. How can I work with you? How can I do this for other people? And I also saw that there was a lot of coaches out there that were saying that they were coaching somebody based on their own experience, which is beautiful because they are an expert in it because they've gone through it. But really, there was no proper curated information that was broader than what they had been through themselves. So if they had PCOS, then they were an expert in PCOS and they were going on to coach somebody. Or if they had endometriosis, they went on to coach on on that. But that was kind of what they were limited to essentially versus again, an overall bigger picture of fertility and the mental, physical, spiritual state of all of those things and how to properly coach somebody and hold the space. So there are actual modalities and techniques in coaching rather than just, you know, meeting with somebody and, and talking them through something that they may be going through, whether that's fertility or business coaching or whatever else it may be. And so I started to look at this a little bit more as I had been certified and thought, you know, this, that certification program isn't really all the things that I believed could get somebody to success, which again is this, what I call the creation continuum. So it's focusing on the wellness, the medical side, the 
spiritual side and the feminine energy around all of these things. Mm -hmm. I really do believe that we want to integrate medicine into things, even though people are pretty adamant of, no, I want to do it holistically. I believe in that too, but we certainly want to use Western medicine to eliminate that there's anything going on. So I always Mm -hmm. say, let's get the lay of the land, make sure there is no structural issues, make sure you don't have anything really going on that's preventing this because there are people that because they're so adamant about going natural or you know not going to the doctor about it they're missing time and when you're on a fertility journey time Mm. we need time on our side (laughs) again i'm all about babies at an older age but the reality is you know we need to move faster rather than slower so i'm not advocating that everybody has to take medications, but I am advocating that we need to know how our body is operating properly. Are we ovulating? Do we have a good menstrual cycle? Most people think they have a normal cycle when in fact it's normal for them, but there really, there may be something that is off and it may not be normal, which is indicating your fertility may be struggling in some way. So I curated all of this content, had it run by doctors. It's um, accredited by the AADP, which is the American Association of Drugless Practitioners. So we're kind of in a category with acupuncturists and other um, medical practitioners that kind of fall on the more holistic side of things. Mm -hmm. So now we coach other coaches to help other people. And the way that I see this is just that domino or ripple effect of this collective of people helping other people on their journey to know that if they are going through this, they don't have to go through it alone. And it really is a thing that it is not the easiest to go through. And the more support you get, the less your time will be on your journey and the more successful you will be in a mental state as you're going through it. Yeah. Wow. That's so incredible. I love that you've kind of got that purpose for yourself and through that enabling other people to you know, coach as well, the the impact is just spreading and amplified by so much. So I just love that idea. Yeah, it's it's great because again, having been a coach for so long prior, Mm -hmm. I know that there are so many avenues. If we have one in six now worldwide that's struggling through fertility, there's so many people when we walk into Starbucks to say, okay, one of one in six of these people is suffering through fertility. We just don't think of it in those ways. Mm -hmm. But if you are looking to have a side hustle from your nine to five or kind of veer off to from something corporate and nobody really thinks of this kind of side of women's wellness as a niche market um and they're projecting it i think by 2025 it's 47 billion dollars um just in the us and i know australia actually is another really big area for clinics popping up and um, a lot of awareness Mm. being brought to the table as well at the moment. But it really is not necessarily just for, like I said, people that are struggling with fertility. It's bringing the awareness and the education to younger women. We were not taught this in school. You were taught, you know, everybody has a period every 28 days for four days. That is not very likely anymore or ever, but that's what we were taught. We weren't taught about when you're ovulating and really that's what we need to know is, you know, yeah. To, yeah. so there's so many things as to the, the education and the awareness brought to the table with um, this niche. So I would encourage anybody who's, you know, has a slight interest in women's wellness and the journey or the path has been easy for you or hard for you um, mm. to, to think about maybe helping somebody else in that way. Yeah, uh, it's it's so funny because as you were saying that, I was laughing, thinking, you know, I reflect back and there's so much that you just don't know that you don't know or that you right. have, you know, gathered that information either at school or through your GP and your doctor and, you know, they, they're always on about, well, you know, you need to be in contraception and if you're not, then you can get pregnant and you can, you know, there's all this fear around you might get pregnant and it being a bad thing. So you kind of expect that as soon as you stop doing anything, it's just going to happen. Right. (laughs) And, you know, like I was, I was over 30, I think when I started thinking, okay, now we could, you know, have a baby. Um, I was, you know, I did a lot of traveling and I wasn't really ready when I was younger and that was all good. But, 
I had an implant on in my arm. I took it out and I was like, well, they said as soon as it's out, basically it can happen. And so I wasn't really concerned about it at all. But probably two years went past before I was like, well, actually, I probably have to pay attention to what's actually going on and right. when is the right time. And, you know, I look back now and laugh because it's like, well, how ridiculous that I didn't even think about that or pay attention to it and then it was like wow this is actually like super specific and you've got to be really scientific about it and there's only actually a few days in the whole month and it's like the stars can align oh my god literally the stars aligning yes (laughs) it was like you've got to be kidding me and then you know once I had that sorted it was fine but I wasted Mm -hmm. like you say I wasted that time just because of whatever I had thought to be true, that knowledge that we could kind of gather as kids or, you know, what was the mainstream education, if we can even call it that, like, right. <laughs> <laughs> that was just so not, not true at all. And I think, you know, how, how much do we not really realize or how much are we under beliefs that we've been, you know, we've kind of picked up over the years or, You know, sometimes as much as I like, you know, the GPs and the medical profession do a wonderful job, but they've they've been taught certain things and they've been taught about medication. They haven't often been taught about all the other influences, right? Right. And, you know, it's, it's, I can just see how much of a gap there is, you know, as you were talking, I know people who have struggled um, and, you know, I ended up being, I was almost 40 when I had my second child. So I was uh, definitely close to that. And yeah, I look back and think, well, if I sorted that out sooner, I probably would have had three kids, but I had kind of left at that point. There was a whole lot happening and I'm happy with my two, very happy, but, um, you know, it was time just, it's not on your side, is it? So no, unfortunately. Yeah. That's amazing. Um, now you, we were chatting before we started this and, you know, you brought up about having a heart centered business and, you know, what that, why you want to start one. I'm interested to kind of dive into it because you've alluded to the fact that you run a marketing agency, you know, with corporate and I came from corporate marketing. So I'm like, I feel like I understand where you're coming from, where you're like, well, that's something you enjoy, but it wasn't really your purpose and your passion. Do you want to tell us a bit more about what you see as a heart-centered business? Like, What does that actually really mean? And why is that something that you feel strongly about or or really um, maybe not so much strongly, but that you advocate for, um, you know, having a business that is heart-centered as opposed to whatever the alternative is. <laughs> right, right. And I think that that is different for everybody, right? Some people could be in the corporate world and feeling that they are leading Absolutely. a very heart-centered work working environment and life there. I've always been in software marketing and, you know, you you don't really feel like you're changing lives too much with with doing that. Um and I was very fortunate that I was able to work with and still do work with some of the largest companies in the world in the software industry. Mm -hmm. And as great as that is, it just, it's different when you know that you're affecting somebody's life and Mm -hmm. impacting them in one way or the other. I have people that have called me at 10 o'clock at night because they were ready to end their life and I was able to help them and knowing those sorts of things and the, um, thousands of babies that have come into the world that I get their pictures and all of those things. So it really is a different way of showing up to say, I am serving Mm -hmm. rather than I'm here to do a job. And when I felt and still do in the corporate marketing, I've always looked at it in the sense of who am I working with? Who are the people that are there, right? It could be Mm -hmm. software, it could be a product, it could be whatever, but who are the people around you? Because that's what I feel like always makes the difference of your day, right? The people make or break your day. Mm -hmm. That's just my opinion, but that is what I've found. (laughs) And there have been times throughout these 25 years that I've been on my own thinking, okay, maybe I'm put here that to help this woman, because I I think she's really struggling and I do not think she's happy. And maybe I can be that light today in her world and show her a more positive way of of showing up just in a corporate meeting, right? And that was just my internal dialogue of kind of making it my mini heart-centered mission to know like who around me needs a little extra attention or a little extra 
you know, thoughtfulness yeah. around them or something of that way in that sense. It wasn't until, like I said, I went off to do the coaching in 2008 that I started essentially leading these parallel lives, really, of it started as me volunteering on the coaching side to organizations that were uh, centered around girls. So I would went, the first one actually was called Girls Inc. And it helped young girls that were struggling with self-esteem and or had been in the foster system or something like that. And I really would just spend my time there showing them an example of what a young successful woman could do and what I would help them to do and mm -hmm. as sort of a mentor essentially. And then it turned into from there, I was helping women that were going through divorce, um, people that were struggling with addiction issues with their within their families again other things that i had gone through in my life whether it was direct or had been pre, like side to side with adjacent to so to speak and that really kind of helped me to see what do i feel more fulfillment in right i wasn't put on this earth to do product launches for software. I was pretty sure about that. <laughs> Could I do it well? And did I know my job? Yes. But I knew that there was something more to that. And I think that's where you start to just kind of listen to that intuition in you to say, okay, what does that look like for me? What would it be if I were to do something on the side of my nine to five, right? Because a lot of people don't aren't able to leave their nine to five. They need the benefits or that steady paycheck, or maybe they're just not comfortable going out on their own to to work project to project or whatever it may be. And there's no judgment there. I totally get that. Everybody's wired different. We all need a place for everyone here. But in, you can always find something that lights you up separate to that, if, mm. if that's what it is. And so it may not be a heart-centered business, but maybe it's you know something that's heart-centered that you volunteer at or that you are reading even you, it doesn't even have to be that heavy of a lift right it's just what are you doing for yourself to know that you're serving those outside of you and when i say reading it's because you're reading something that you can then pass on to someone else i feel like that message of mm -hmm. what can i take in that i can push on to somebody else that sounds awful to say but pass on to someone else mm -hmm. um and and give them a message that would be uplifting to them in some way. And for me, it was coaching was my first love of recognizing this felt so good, not only for me, but for other people. I was helping to transform their lives in these magical ways. I come from a background where my mom is a, is depressed. And so I grew up seeing that and saw her go to therapy for thousands of years without getting better. And to see the, the transformation of people with coaching to go from one narrative in their mind to change that, to see results in all kinds of ways, again, losing weight, relationships, whatever it may be, to now fertility has just given my life so much more richness mm. and fulfillment than I ever thought possible. And therefore it overflows into everyone around me too. Even my little, I have three little boys and they get just as excited hearing about these baby announcements and positive pregnancy tests because it's like a big party at our house because it's just filled with so much joy to yeah. see what it can be when we really do serve the world from our heart. Yeah, I love that. I relate to that so much because, you know, once I guess looking back on, um, you know, when I was in corporate as well, and I think, I love my job and I loved, you know, I, I did marketing. I still do marketing. That's kind of, I've lived and breathed it for 25 years. I, I love it. It just didn't feel fulfilling really to be making the, the board or the shareholders happy. You know, it was sort of like, okay, that's good. It's an achievement, but I didn't feel it. Like it wasn't like, wow, I've really made an impact here. I was like, no, I was doing the job that I was paid to do and I did a good job and that was great. Yeah. But yeah, I think that for me, it's exactly the same, that difference when now through my business, I can help other people to, you know, really put the pieces of their business strategy together to have an outcome. You know, sometimes they're just blown away. They're like, I didn't even, wasn't even thinking of this as the possibility. Like they had a vision that was so much smaller and, you know, just what they could achieve in such a short time. 
it, it's like I just can't stop smiling. I love it. You right. know, I get on the calls and and I think, well, this is what I, you know, I feel like that's what I was put on this earth to do and to be and to help show other people the the light you know what's easy for me isn't always easy for someone else and right. and you know to make make those connections like you say there's just a totally different feeling about it and um, you know, I love that it's just possible to 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 do this because you look back in our like when my mum grew up I don't even think anyone did anything like this it was very much like not even possible so right yeah we just I just feel so lucky that we're blessed to live in a time like today and and there are so many people who are I guess you know looking outside of themselves and actually thinking you know well I can do something different I can be something different and and everybody's making those steps to to improve and to educate and to better themselves which is just fantastic (laughs) exactly I love that you say that what you were good at, because I think that's always a really great place to start when you're Mm -hmm. thinking of what could I potentially do? Well, what are you good at? What, what lights you up? What, what do other people come to you to ask your help with? You know, maybe it's not something that you love necessarily, but if you're able Mm -hmm. to transform that into helping somebody, you might learn to love it because you're good at it. So I think there's people that are even, you know, in their day job and they're like, I hate this. Why do, why is it that you hate it? You know, maybe it's, you hate it because you're not inspiring somebody, but if you're an accountant, let's say, and you are going to go teach somebody else how to do something that's going to make their lives easier or make them money, then you're going to light up because that's going to, you know, again, you're passing it on to somebody else to help them. And they say that you're an expert if you know 10% more than the last person or the next person. That's not a lot to consider yourself an expert. Now, most people, I would say, want to take that further and do a certification or something to be have that additional accountability or credibility and authority, which I, I agree with. I'm, I'm good with that. But I think people get paralyzed in that thought process of, I need to go back to school or I need to do this or that or the other thing in order to move forward. And they they let that stop them from just making the first step into, okay, well, I love crocheting. So maybe I can help somebody else learn how to crochet and start a group and charge for that or whatever it may be. I don't know. Um, So I think I love what you say is just I'm good at it. And Mm -hmm. so now I can help other people see their success through it. Yeah, you're so right. And it's often right there, like already as part of you, you might not even recognize that it's something that you're good at because you probably think everybody else can do what you do as well. Right. And right. I think that's the, probably the the first step is is actually starting to just pay attention or notice what seems to feel almost too easy to you that it's like well is this really even a thing and like yes right. it it often is whatever feels really great to you um you know your job may not feel great that might be more about the environment that you're in or the culture or something like that it's not that you don't like what you do right like you said Mm -hmm. it might just be the place that you're doing it or or where it is um right but you know that's it's so true and I laugh because before I started this business my husband and I would do so many road trips where we're brainstorming like what business shall we start? Like what ideas are there? And we're like looking out there for like, where is the thing? Like, where's the idea? And it never even occurred to me to like, look, (laughs) to look inside, to be like, well, hang on, what have I already got? What do I already know and do? And it's just like now it's so obvious, but then I probably spent 10 years. Like I always wanted to have my own business. I did start one before this, um, which was an idea, <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. gap in the market, start right. that one and, um, and well, it wasn't really my passion. So I, I did it for eight years and, that, and then I sold it, but um, it, you know, there was a lot of really great lessons in there. And one of them was do what you actually really love <laughs> at your core, that what, yes. something that really means something to you and, and that you, you know, you probably already think about all the time or already do um, because that just makes life so much easier when you just extend that into your business. Yes. And I love too, that you just say you changed after eight years, you know, most of us growing up, our parents were at the same company for 
40 years or whatever it may be. And that's not the world we live in now. You don't need to be doing the same thing forever. You can do multiple things at the same time. You don't have to put yourself in a box. You know, I do two completely very successful businesses because those are what, that's what I love to do. But I tell people all the time, even if you find a a niche market, that can change. You know, you could be talking to one person about this today and then next month say, you know what, I'm going to shift and do X, Y, Z instead. And that's totally okay. I think that's another place where people get stuck is, oh my gosh, am I going to want to do this forever? And it's like, you don't have to do it forever, right? (laughs) Do it this week and see how it goes. Try it on and and see how that goes. I would just say not to invest so much upfront with the idea that, okay, this can change, right? So have the template of your website, let's say, knowing that you're able to change that around a little bit here and there. Um, I mean, of course, there's some things that you do need to go full on into, but from the most part, there's a lot of wiggle room in between it and just be gentle with yourself that it is okay Mm -hmm. to change and, and do something else. Yeah, exactly. And, the, you know, those changes are an evolution. Like it's not like if you decide to change that you've wasted your time doing something. Right. It's actually right. like, well, no, that was all helping you get to where you are now. And then you're now ready for, a, you know, if it's a shift or if it's a refinement, if it's an evolution going in a different direction, that was just part of how you got there because you wouldn't have been able to start where you are without having got to the place where you are now. So, you know, 100% think, agree. We're all yeah. exactly where we're meant to be in the moment. Yeah, that's amazing. Well, this has been such an interesting chat, Elizabeth. I know that we've like touched on so many aspects and we could have deep dived into many different things, but I, I really loved chatting with you about your journey, about your business and, you know, definitely the fertility market, just how much impact you're having there. It's, it's just incredible. So I thank you so much for coming to share that with us. And if anybody wants to connect with you and find out a bit more about what you do, or even just follow you for some of these amazing um, nuggets that you've shared with us today, where can they best do that? You can find me on Instagram at the official Elizabeth King. My website is elizabethking.com and the podcast is Creation Innovation but I'd, we'd love to see you anywhere and everywhere. And we definitely are in touch with people and are live in DMs. I, mm-hmm. I'm obsessed with voice memos. So <laughs> if you DM me, I'll probably send you a voice memo back. But yes, that's where you can find me. Oh, that's amazing. And do, do you have anything that you wanted to leave um, people with today? Um, I know we've touched on so many different aspects, but is there something that you're like, oh, I'd just love to share this one final thought? I think really just if you're on the fence about something that's tugging at your heart, follow your intuition and just start. It doesn't have to take a lot of money. You don't have to change your whole, you don't have to quit your job in order to start something new. Just start, have that first conversation with someone and say, I'm, I'm going to put this out there to the universe and see how it goes. We have to get better at trusting our own intuition and taking that step out into the future. We never know what the dots are going to connect looking forward. We only know what they look like looking back. And that's where, as you were saying, everything leads us to where we are today. And if that is tugging at you, I would just say, answer that uh, and explore that. Mm, Love that. Thank you so much. It's such a good advice. Um, And just to to do it, right? What's the worst that can happen? I think we put so much into things at times and think, well, I've I've got to make sure this is 100% the right decision. Well, you're never going to know until you try. And so the best thing you can do, as Elizabeth just said, is just give it a go, like see what happens and let it evolve um, without trying to control that outcome so much because, you know, the more that we hold back and wait until we've dotted all the I's and the T's, I think you often just lose a lot of the steam, don't you? hundred <laughs> percent. Yeah. Get, yeah. get going while, while the, the going is good. <laughs> yeah. Amazing. Yeah. That's wonderful. Thank you, Elizabeth. It's been awesome to chat with you today and we hope to Thanks for having soon. me. Thank you. 
If you're a coach, a consultant, or an online service provider, and you're sick of relying on referrals or feeling really overworked and underpaid for the time that you're putting into your business and really just want to feel like you're on the path to having a fulfilling high income business that allows you to work part-time hours so you can spend more time with your family, for yourself, and actually enjoy your life then I have the solution for you. My program, Business Jam, contains my proven strategy for attracting high quality clients to really profitable and saleable services that also fit your lifestyle needs so that you've created a game that you can win in your business and it actually gets you to the outcome that you set out to create when we first started. Now, this is for you, whether you've been in business for 10 years, 20 years, or even if it's year one, then this is your core marketing strategy foundation that helps you to focus on the right things, stop focusing on all of the wrong things and wasting all of your time with activities that you don't need to be doing. So we get you streamlined and attracting in exactly what you need to have the business outcome that you desire. Business Jam is not open right now, but the waitlist is open. So head to jessicaosborne.com slash waitlist and put your name down to get on my priority waitlist for Business Jam. So you're first to hear about it when we're opening doors next. And I always save a few extra special things just for the people who are on my waitlist. So that could be you. So head over to jessicaosborne.com slash waitlist to get your name on the priority waitlist for Business Jam. And you'll be first to hear all about it when we're opening up next. Thank you so much for tuning in to another episode of She's a Business Podcast. I hope that you've been enjoying it as much as I have in creating the content to bring to you. So I really appreciate you being here. I appreciate your presence and your attention. Now, if you love the podcast or maybe you just loved today's episode, then I would absolutely appreciate it if you would go to Apple Podcasts, um, scroll down, hit the five stars, and then leave me a short review about what it was that you really enjoyed in this episode or maybe in the podcast overall. And when I receive those reviews, then I love to give those reviewers a shout out on my future podcast episodes. So you never know, you may hear your name getting a shout out in a future episode if you do that. So thank you once again for your time and I'll see you next time on She's the Business.